We welcome in women's head coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton. Coach, how are you? Oh, we're doing good. good. Getting ready for Thanksgiving this week and getting ready for another uh, set of good games. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's Thanksgiving time, it seems like, is always an exciting time in basketball season. It is. Everyone's, you know, starting to kind of get revved up. You know, you got those first couple of games under your belt, and now it's really uh, time to perform and see where you're going to be. Over the weekend, you guys had a tough test against an Elite Eight team. How'd you feel like you guys did? You know what? I thought we beat ourselves against Columbus State. They were a good team. Um, we knew at the half there were three things that we needed to correct. We needed to keep them off the offensive glass. Um, we also needed to control our turnovers because they were scoring off of our unforced turnovers. And then we needed to shoot better at the free throw line. Um, and in the second half, we just didn't make those corrections. We were worse in the second half, second half than we were in the first. Um, so yeah, when you don't make those corrections, you can't uh, you can't necessarily win the game. But I thought we gave a tremendous this fight in the second half. Uh, we only lost by six uh, on the road to a team who went undefeated on their home court last year. Wow, that's a, that's remarkable. And, and you knew that this year, at the start of the season, there were going to be some growing pains because there's so many new pieces, right? Oh, no doubt. We, that's where we are in our program is that we do have those growing pains going on right now. We've got some really good talent, um, but we're just waiting on some of that talent to catch up. One of your newcomers, Haley Neiman, has made an instant impact. You really have to like what you've seen out of her. Oh, uh, she's the kid that is going to be on the floor. She's going to crash her body into the wall if she needs to. She's that type of player, but she's super talented. Um, she's from the Michigan area and uh, a transfer from Saginaw Valley State where she was freshman of the year in that conference two years ago, which is the same conference that produced the national championship team last year. Wow, so you know you're getting a strong player. Yeah. And she's played like it. It really hasn't taken her long to make the adjustment, it seems like. No, she, and she loves basketball. She loves being here in Pensacola. She really uh, has fit right in with her teammates, and uh, we're excited about what she's going to bring to the table this year. You've got a big one midweek this week, and now Courtney Myers got a chance at some history this week uh, over in Mobile. Yeah, no doubt. Courtney, uh, you know, with her block shots per game, uh, hopefully she's two away from breaking that record. We're hoping she gets that uh, this week. Of course, we're not emphasizing that mm -hmm. because obviously being a shot blocker, it's a very uh, tactical skill because either you're going to block that shot or most likely you're going to get a foul if you miss it. So we don't really, uh, you know, put a lot of pressure on her, but she's naturally good at it. I feel like we talked about it a little bit last year, but but, but there there's an art because you, you, you can't foul in that situation, you know, but, but she stays out of foul trouble while blocking a record number of shots. So so where does that come from? Is that instincts or is there a way you can coach that? Well, you know, Laquanda Quick, our assistant coach, uh, you know, was a shot blocker herself at the University of North Carolina and in the WNBA. And uh, when she came in, she really taught uh, Courtney how to block shots but not block them from the player that she is defending. So most of Courtney's shot, shot blocks are coming from when she comes over to help a teammate hmm. or when she's in a position to block a player that she's not guarding. So that's kind of where those blocks are coming in, is keeping her out of foul trouble when she's blocking shots in that way. And, and of course, that helps us so we can keep her on the floor. Well, after everybody's stuffed with some turkey, you guys are going to be back home over the weekend. I say back home. You're going to be home for the first time. You guys yes. have to be looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Go and get St. Leo on. On Sunday. Um, again, another regional team from the Sunshine Conference. Uh, good opportunity for us to see where we measure up with teams in that in that side of the area uh, in the region. So, um, yeah, we're excited about that. We'd love to have a big crowd here for that first home game. That would be excellent. And it's an early afternoon tip-off, so it should be a fun day and, and, of course, over a holiday weekend as well. So, so uh, should be a lot of fun. People maybe can get a break from their shopping, come out, watch the basketball. Uh, want to talk about the fact that this team has had different uh, point leaders already through through the first three games of the season. It's incredible to to have that kind of depth, I guess, on your team at this point. It's, it's really becoming a strength. Yeah, no doubt. And this is the same productivity that we saw from last year's Elite Eight team. I thought that was one thing that really made us special last year is that we have multiple players that could step in and provide big points at different times. Um, so from an opposing coach's standpoint, that's hard to guard, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, if you've only got one or two players that are constantly doing your scoring, um, that's pretty easy scout to figure out. But when you've got three, four, five people that can score in double figures uh, for your team and really contribute at a high level, that's hard for opponents to guard. Well, Stephanie, good luck this weekend. We'll see you over the weekend, all right? Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes.